What's going on, my friends? Cubs fan hot here for another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. And today, my friends, we are going to be talking about the top 10 most underutilized characters in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now, as we talk about this, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about characters that nobody has and nobody uses at all. What I'm more getting at here is the characters that are not being used to their full potential. And I'll, I'll explain that character by character. There's a few characters in particular who I'm confident most of you watching this video probably have and might even use on a regular basis, but you aren't using them to their full potential, at least based on some data that I'm seeing from SWGOH.GG. So without any further ado, let's get to the list. All right, starting with number one, we have got my man, Ezra Bridger in at number one. Now, a lot of people are gonna have Ezra Bridger, but how many people have him at gear 13? And this is where this percentage comes in. This data is according to SWGOH.GG, and it is the percentage of people that have Ezra Bridger that have him at gear 13. Only 0.59% of people have Ezra Bridger at gear 13. Um, and I'm really curious how many people have him at higher relics. And um, now again, it's important to note that SWGH.GG is gauging uh, only the people that are registered on SWGH.GG. So I do, in fairness, want to call that out. But that said, um, it's probably going to scale in favor of this list because the most committed people are going to be on SWGH.GG. So I'm guessing that percentage would actually go down if you include if you got the data for the entire game, not just those on SWGH.GG. But at this point, there's a pretty good sample size there. Anyway, looking at Ezra Bridger, what he can do at gear 13. Um, I have some footage here for most of these characters that I found online. This is from uh, DSTQ. He's got an Ezra here at gear 13, and you can just see this doing some great damage. And something that I think is really great about Ezra in particular is that Ezra is so versatile. You can use him in a CLS team here. This CLS team is countering Darth Revan, utilizing Ezra Bridger. You can also use him in a Phoenix squad. You can also use him in a Jedi squad. There's just so many places you can use him, and I do understand Gear 13 prioritizing is not the easiest thing, but look, Flourish is gonna do absolutely great bananas damage as it is. Add Gear 13 on it, and he's going to be able to do pretty well. So Ezra Bridger, Coming in at number one on this list. All right. Or number 10, I should say. Looking at number nine, we have got Count Dooku. Now, Count Dooku, only 1.95% of Count Dooku's, according to SWGH.GGR Gear 13. A lot of people are still using him with Newt, especially um, at uh, Gear 11, Gear 12, and you're getting good use out of him. But have you seen what Count Dooku can do? when he's gear 13 and especially when he's high relic gear 13. Check out this footage right here. This is from uh, Comrade Clutch and this is showing Count Dooku here at relic seven in Geonosis territory battles. Look at what he's able to do on his basic here. All right, Asajj is gonna do her thing. Just, just imagine the possibilities. 31, 34, gone. Oh my gosh, 32. 30,000 damage on that basic, he's gonna double tag, and he's gonna hit underneath protection. That's just, that's crazy, and he's just getting warmed up. Uh, Count Dooku is one of the most threatening characters in this game when you get him in the right squad. Uh, now, this isn't really showing him in, in that squad. This is obviously just territory battles. It's that Asajj Dooku mission. Look at that, 41,000 damage on basic. I'm loving it, 32, 35. Uh, but when you get him in a Newt squad, he's just unbelievably threatening. Um, so Count Dooku, absolutely deserving of being in here at uh, at number nine. All right, let's go to number eight. We have got Old Daka. Now, Old Daka has the highest percentage on this list, 5.57%. Uh, but the reason why I'm still including her is just because of how essential I feel like a Gear 13 Daka is. This is probably my favorite investment uh, relic wise in the game. Um, I've got her here on my account. You can see her at relic four. Old Daka. And there's just so much health. I can't tell you guys how many times 
This has benefited me um, either on Grand Arena defensive holding. Uh, it's helped me uh, on uh, territory battles. Um, you know, she just gets so unbelievably tanky when you get here up at uh, at the high relic. She's starting with a base health here now of 93,000 at relic four. Um, I, I would love to take her up more. I've got some other relic priorities right now, but at the end of the day, Dak is somebody you definitely don't want to avoid uh, taking to gear 13 at a minimum. I think she's an essential gear 13 character in every roster, personally. Um, Night Sister is such an essential team. I think Dak is one of the most important gear 13s on that team. And to see that only 5% have her at gear 13 makes me want to put her on this list. We're not utilizing Dak enough out there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, at least to her for full potential. Number seven, Amphis Nest. Now, Nest, she's in. She's got 3.9%, so that's a higher percentage than a lot of these characters too. But you just, you just can't believe what Nest can do at uh, high relics. Um, it's at gear 13. It's just absolutely bananas. This footage here comes from uh, Snake the Vial. On YouTube, and uh, he's gonna solo bugs with with Nest here at Gear 13, um, Relic 7. So this is Relic 7. This is the the most bananas you can get with Nest. But something that I did not realize and did not appreciate until I experienced it myself was just how much crazy tenacity Nest gets when you get her to Gear 13 and High Relics. I went up against a Nest once in Grand Arena. Some of you were there. Um, it was on the stream, and Nest. Just had so much tenacity that my Jedi Revan was never able to land any of that uh, health reduction on basics. It just didn't work, period. And, and I got timed out. I just, I never burnt through Nest. And you also add that health protection. She gets a lot more tanky, harder to get down. And so Nest is already, I mean, at gear 12, who doesn't have a gear 12 Nest? I mean, almost all of you probably have a high gear Nest but only 3.9% of you have a gear 13 nest, according to .gg. And that's where nest really goes next level, and you have to plan around her more. You almost only have, you just basically have to annihilate her when she gets up to this point, because the tenacity gets so crazy, um, or at least it can if you mod her right. So, F is nest in at number seven on the list. All right, let's go back to the list. Number six, we have got Django Fett, only 2.29%. And I think something, a big reason why I include Django on this list is because Django is part of a very common defensive team. I mean, you guys you guys have seen Bounty Hunters. And by the way, this comes from X Lucky. Um, I think it is. Uh, you can see that on YouTube right there. Um, again, I've got, by the way, I've got links to all this, these battles down in the uh, description below. But uh, this is Django Relic 7 going up against Jedi Revan. That's crazy. Um, you can use it that way or just, you know, putting him on defense. Um, people are used to facing bounty hunters, right? But with only 2.29% of Django's at gear 13, not very many people are used to facing a Django that does this much damage and can handle this much. So I think Django Fett showing up on this list, like what you can add to your team, having a high relic Django is just a lot. Um, I mean, look at this, 41,000 damage on basic. <laughs> he just sliced through General Kenobi there, even though Jolie's going to revive him. Um, this footage is really cool, by the way. I would definitely recommend checking out the full battle. I'm not going to show the full battle here. Um, so anyway, a Bosk on that team is where I think a lot of people put the gear 13. And I think that makes sense, ha having Bosk as the gear 13, because he gets really tanky. But something I think is of note is a lot of people build a strategy around avoiding Bosk. And so it doesn't, like, I just get my Thrawn fast enough, fracture Bosk, and I worry about the rest of the team. And Bosk is pinned down. It doesn't really matter. I can handle the rest of the team. And so this really punishes you for doing that because if you just take out Bosk and worry about the rest, you know, pin Bosk down, um, those other guys are going to sneak up on you. So uh, High Relic Django, definitely don't want to sleep on him. All right. Let's go back to the list. Number five on our list is Wampa. Now, a lot of you guys have a gear 12 Wampa. You know how usable gear 12 Wampa is, but only 1.94% have taken him to gear 13. Now, I do think something I will 
I think is notable as, as we get to number five on this list and look at the rest. A lot of these are going to be luxury characters, right? A lot of you don't have the resources to gear 13 these characters. That's totally fine. I'm not, I'm not saying that you guys all need to have these characters at gear 13. Uh, but gear 13 has been out long enough now that I think we can all really kind of dig into the deeper parts of our roster and take full advantage of some of these sleeper characters that do crazy damage. Just look at what Womp is able to do. This is Womp at Relic 7. Uh, this is my man Andrew Cox who shared this footage. Solo against Rebels. Now, um, not super crazy. I mean, we know he does good against Rebels, but just look at the damage. 94 on basic! 94,000 on his basic at the beginning of the battle. Let's see what he's able to do towards the end. All right, he's gonna get angry here. Here he goes, Chirrut hits him. Go counter, baby. Okay, let's see. Four, <laughs> look at that AOE. 78. All right, so the way that worked at the end didn't do as much, but that was 78 against a non-Rebel because that was uh, Vander Chewbacca, if I recall. So anyway, Wampa does just incredible damage. Definitely not somebody you want to uh, go ahead and sleep on. So, all right, let's go back to the list ladies and gentlemen we have got the one the only first order executioner in at number four first order executioner only one percent have taken him to gear 13. this is another kind of like Django, common defensive team you're seeing um in grand arena but how many times are you seeing the gear 13 especially on fox and fox is the one that can come out and just absolutely Molly Wop you. I already showed you this footage in a video recently. Uh, this is from uh, Dark Omega. Again, his first order team. This was his first order team that was able to take on Sith Empire. Um, now, a lot of this is credit to Hux and Sith Trooper, but the damage that his Relic 7 Fox is able to do is pretty insane. Something else that's definitely of note as you look at Fox right now is Fox is probably going to be a big part of whatever the next meta is just because he's such a big damage dealer um i could easily see this team being what the new meta is right in front of us just add a new version of kylo instead of kylo ren unmasked um i i don't think they're going to want to have two kylos in the team if i know cg and so very good chance that fox ends up being a big part of that next meta so fox only one percent have him at gear 13 definitely underutilized to his full potential right now all right let's look at number three on the list we have got nice sister spirit oh my gosh so we got two nice sisters on the list nice sister spirit does crazy damage just look at this right here this is uh uh loci 89 000 on basic there in territory battles 89 thousand. <laughs> that's crazy Spirit is what really took Night Sister teams. There's another 80,000 on the basic. Spirit is really kind of the the damage, the main damage machine of these Night Sister teams. 120,000 damage. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's crazy. Um, she's only got 1.3% uh, at uh, gear 13, and really kind of takes your Night Sister level to that you know to that next level. Your Night Sister team, uh, rather, uh, she's already threatening on defense uh, when when you've got her at gear 12, and I think a lot of you probably have her at gear 12. Uh, but you add that gear 13 there, and it's like white knuckle matches. You're gonna get mollywopped for uh, almost 100,000 da damage on her basic. Her specials. Here we go. Here comes a special right now. 120,000! You just, you can't sleep on her. She's got that foresight. Uh, you know, you've got lots of taunting from Zombie. Dak has got that revive threat. It just really takes it to the next level. So number three, Nice Sister Spirit. All right, let's go ahead and check out number two on our list. Zalbar. Only 7.6% or 0.76% rather have Zalbar at gear 13. Now, Mission and Zalbar paired together are one of the best duos in this game, in my humble opinion. Um, and their team, a lot of people are very comfortable facing at this point. We've kind of found a way to counter the Karth, Mission, Zalbar teams. But when that team has Gear 13 on it, Zalbar, the amount of tenacity he gets, the tankiness that he gains, and what his kit does to that, you just... 
have such a hard time burning through him. I actually wasn't able to find footage. I wish I recorded it because I went up against the Gear 13 Zalbar once and lost myself because I just was not able to get through him. I timed out. I, there's nothing I could do to get through. Zalbar is almost like another nest. He almost turned into a nest at Gear 13. Just absolutely insane tankiness on this guy. All right. Number one kind of piggybacks off Zalbar because if you have a Gear 13 Zalbar and a Gear 13 Candorous Ordo, you are going to be set, my friends. Only 0.54% have Candorous Ordo at Gear 13. Candorous Ordo is decent at Gear 12. He's one of those characters, though, that you a lot of people get him for the you know for the Legendary Revan event, and that's great and all. You know, you you got your Candorous Ordo for that. But you're not really using it. Maybe you're putting him on defense. He's not really that threatening at gear 11, gear 12. At gear 13, he is freaking threatening, my friends. He is absolutely threatening. Check out this footage here. This is from Clash, DOE. He made a video on this, and this video got a lot of views. So he deserved it, too. Look at what he's able to do right at the beginning of this video. Just, just watch this damage. 53. 65. He... This is the... Beginning of the battle. He, Candorous by himself, just takes out Sith Trooper from full health, full protection. Boom. Boom. That's a gear 13 Sith Trooper. And then look at this. 47. 54. One more. 46. And then HK. See you later. <laughs> that is just bananas. Now, this is a Relic 7 Candorous Ordo. This is a luxury character. A lot of people are going to have other priorities before they get to this point. But if you can get your Candorous Ordo to this point, he will light people up. Imagine that on defense. You cannot just take your normal counter for Karth if you've got a Gear 13 Relic 7 Candorous in there. People are not going to be able to do that because every time Candorous goes, he basically just one-shots everyone because he triple taps, and every tap is going to be 50,000 plus, it looks like. Or 40, 50, whatever. So anyway, here you guys can see the rounded list. We have got 1 through 10, Candrus Ordo coming at number 1. This is a ranked list, by the way. I really feel strongly about Candrus being number 1 um, on this list. So let me know what you guys think about the list down in the comments below. What are your most underutilized characters in this game, in your opinion? These are the 10 that, in my opinion, are not getting enough love, at least from gear at Gear 13 on. Let me know again what you guys think down in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, leave it a like. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, my brothers, don't forget.